most patients have looked into 10, 15 diets uh, before they've had bariatric surgery or considered bariatric surgery. The real issue is that morbid obesity is a disease in and of itself. It, we're talking about obesity, completely different. I mean, those are people that need to lose maybe 50 or 60 pounds. That's probably not a genetic problem. But when people are morbidly obese, that is 100 pounds, body mass index 35 to 40 or more, then that's a genetic issue. And although they've tried diets and behavior modification and sometimes medications, the real sustainable weight loss is really only obtained through surgery. People have this relationship with food when they're morbidly obese, but they don't want that relationship. They are driven to eat because they never get their hunger turned off. And that's what's really hard for people that are thin to understand. Because when we eat something, whatever the amount on the plate is that, that we eat, we're done. We go back to work, we think about something else, we don't plan the next meal, we don't think about the food. But with people of size, when they finish a meal, whatever size that is, they never get the thought of food turned off. And so they're constantly driven by that. And so people think, well, they have a different relationship with food because they're always thinking about it, but it's not a relationship that they want. So after gastric bypass, the fact that that hunger is turned off is like this newborn freedom for them. And, and that's really the thing that's very important. Dr. Wickrow, can you explain the difference between these two very popular procedures right now, the, the lap band procedure and the gastric bypass procedure? And, you know, how do you know which procedure is best for you? The two operations um, are really the gastric bypass, laparoscopic gastric bypass, and the laparoscopically placed adjustable band. Um, the, the one that's really the gold standard is the gastric bypass. It's the one that everything else is judged against. And the, the issue with a band is that we really don't know the best candidate for the band. Um, we're finding in Europe and even in Australia that the long-term success for the band is not as good in all comers. So there's, there's probably a subset of, of patient population that the band will do very well with, but we're really not exactly sure what group that is. Certainly if you look at diabetics, the best operation for a diabetic is a gastric bypass because it changes it hormonally. It's not related to the weight loss. So even before the weight comes off, diabetes is improved. Other places, we're not as, as really sure, um, but we do know that the weight loss, sustainable weight loss with a gastric bypass is better than with a band. Doctor, we've heard the recent studies about gastric bypass and its actual beneficial effects on type 2 diabetes. Can you elaborate on that? In probably 95% of the cases, uh, in, in patients who are morbidly obese, I have to have uh, a few qualifiers because it's really do been done on morbidly obese individuals. So morbidly obese individuals who are diabetic, especially those who have been diabetic for less than eight years, um, were able to cure their diabetes in about 95% of the time. And that's within just a couple of days after surgery. So it's, it really is magic. Sure, with a gastric bypass, what we do is we make a very small stomach pouch. The stomach is, is generally about the size of a football. Started using that after we did Anthony Davis's operation. So it's about the same size as a football, and it expands easily. So it, you, we're able to put two platefuls of Thanksgiving dinner in it. What we do is we make a very small pouch out of the top part of the stomach, about the same size as a golf ball. It's really 15 cc's or half ounce in size. And then we reroute some of the intestine to drain that uh, small stomach pouch. So, so you don't have as much of a container to store food and there's very little acid up there in that small pouch. So we eat smaller amounts. It goes directly into the small intestine so we get the feedback mechanism that people are satisfied with that small amount. So that's really the key. If you eat a small amount, but you're frustrated because you're still hungry, then you don't do as well because you will change your eating behaviors, snack, have liquids that contain more sugar. 
So the key in a gastric bypass is that people eat small amounts because it's a restrictive operation, but people are not hungry the same way, and so they are able to maintain the program. So doctor, what about teenagers and the very old? Are these procedures safe for them? Issues about operating on adolescents or people over 60 has been looked at uh, for bariatric surgery for quite some time. Actually, we have one of the largest series of adolescents that's been prevent presented, and that group has done extremely well. So, so we like operating on adolescents. And people kind of shy away from it a little bit, worrying about, um, you know, are these kids going to be okay? But these aren't little nine-year-olds running on, on the playground. We're talking about usually 14 to 18-year-olds who are morbidly obese. So these are individuals that clearly are at least 100 pounds over their ideal body weight and have the medical diseases of adults. So they have diabetes and hypertension, high cholesterol, and so they're not healthy to begin with. So the key on adolescence is that people need to know what program, what the safety issues are with that program, and that they have a psychological development of the program to deal with the kids and their family. Because you have to have more of a family unit when you're dealing with the adolescents. <clears throat> the older folks, it's, it's also very interesting because Medicare just approved uh, bariatric surgery in uh, February of 06. So Medicare made a determination, nationwide determination, that it's approved for Medicare patients, and that included Medicare patients that are over 60 or 65. So we've, uh, we're looking at our series right now. The oldest, one that, the oldest patient that we've operated on is 73, and certainly our group, we've done almost 60 patients over 60 years of age.